Hey everybody, my name is Kid You Catch Me, Southern Fox. I've been told that's a very unusual name, and there's a story that goes with how I got that name and what it means, and that story tells you a little bit about who I am as a person, and that's what I'm going to tell you about today. So, have you ever felt lost or depressed or um, disappointed in the way your life has turned out? Um, I was in that situation about 10 years ago, and it's not really salient to understand why that is and what I was going through because I'm pretty sure most people, if they think about it, can um, relate to a time when they felt a little bit lost and lacked some direction. So when I was in this situation, one thing that I've always heard is that what we should do is we should seek out uh, a spiritual experience of some sort. We should. Um, try to surrender our problems over to God or seek some kind of new definition for our lives. And one way to do that is to spend time in nature. And so that's what I did. About 10 years ago, I um, decided to completely redefine my life and I wanted to get a touch of inspiration from God's creation. And uh, so I began to change a lot of my habits and start spending a lot more time outdoors in nature, trying to be meditative, contemplative, and just uh, hearing how it is that my life needed to change. And during the course of that time, I had a very special encounter with a red fox, and it changed my life. And I was out in the woods, and I had this encounter with this fox, and it was more than just a physical encounter, it was a mental encounter. All of a sudden, I felt as though I was becoming a fox, and instantly downloaded into my brain, as it were, was a whole bunch of rhymes and just a long poem, a lyric poem, about what it would be like to be a fox. And uh, I continued to write. I wrote so much that I have filled up many, many volumes of work about what it's like to be a fox specifically a fox in the Garden of Eden, which is a Bible story that I was uh, raised hearing about and you're probably familiar with too. In the story, the devil actually comes down to earth and takes the form of a snake so that he can tempt Adam and Eve into doing something that they were forbidden to do by God. And when they obey that snake instead of God, they end up getting kicked out of that beautiful paradise garden. Well, in my story, I was imagining what happened when the devil was trying to find an animal that would make his case to Adam and Eve. And I told a story as though the devil was trying to get the fox to be the one who would become his mouthpiece. But he couldn't catch the fox, and the fox wanted nothing to do with the devil's idea of how to corrupt this garden. The fox enjoyed the paradise garden that was all around him and was committed to remaining free and uncaptured. And that's how he got his name could you catch me? Because you couldn't catch him. He was an uncatchable fox. Now, this story that I wrote, uh, I've been preparing for publication. My wife is currently illustrating it for me. This is one of the illustrations of the story. I'm not going to share the entire story, but this picture will give you an idea of what it's all about. This is kind of a psychedelic picture, and in, in it, it, you can see that there's a fox right there. There's also a fox face that frames the entire picture and contained within that are all of the things from the Garden of Eden that he loved. There's Adam, there's Eve, there are all these other creatures. And he's remembering in this part of the story the morning on which he was born in the Garden of Eden. To have an experience like this changes a person. And lots of different cultures have terms for um, a spiritual experience someone that might uh, undergo in which they begin to feel tutored or taught by an animal spirit and some cultures might call that a totem They might call that a spirit animal. You know, I'm not a member of either of those cultures So I don't want to appropriate their terms, but I can tell you I have been through the phenomenon to which those terms refer and I feel like my life changed immensely. I became more full of hope. I became more confident and I began to focus on the environment around me. I began to focus on my love and respect for nature and for the earth. I became an environmental activist. And then shortly after that, I decided that one of the best things I could do as far as um, protecting the environment was learning to grow my own food. 
And so it became a goal of mine to buy a farmhouse and start a farm, which I also did that. And then I thought, what are some of the challenges that are facing um, the, in, the world's environment on a, in a, on a global scale? And I began to realize that our need for replacing uh, fossil fuel energy with renewable energy is a very important thing. And that's an engineering challenge. And there are actually a lot of engineering challenges that um, are directly confronting us in the environmental sphere. So I've also decided to become an engineer. So as I'm working on publishing my book, uh, running my farm, uh, advocating for a clean environment, and learning how to become an engineer to directly solve some of the environmental challenges, I am completely motivated and have been for 10 years by my identification with that red fox that I encountered in the woods. I would encourage anybody who ever feels lost and wants to find some new definition for their life to spend time in nature, spend time in meditation, to open up your spirit and consider the animal kingdom because the animals of the forest, they have a lot to teach us all. Thank you.